But, um, but right now I will admit that I've fallen a bit behind on, you know, when I wake up and work, you know, moving my own body, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that, especially with the weather, it's been snowing at our house. And so yeah. it gives me an excuse to I just stay inside today or whatever. Hey, sweet mama. Welcome back to another episode of mom in process. I'm your host and creator, Amy Cothran. And today I have my very good friend, Cassie. Cassie, (laughs) thank you so much for coming on today. We're going to do, we're going to do a Q and a kind of with a twist. And we've been talking about doing this for a little while. We don't really even have a name for it yet. Like we talked about coffee with Cassie. I was trying to think of a jingle on my way over here. Honestly, I'm like, coffee with Cassie. No, I'm sorry. I'm a terrible singer. (laughs) (laughs) I think we should. Good. Like, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. yeah, I need to have uh, Ron, the editor, maybe like put something in like a little jingle or something for us. That'd be really fun. But Cassie, you live here in the area. Yep. So we've known each other like our whole lives. Yes. Um, right. And mm-hmm. she's been such a supporter of this community. And I think you were one of the first listeners. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's honestly helped me so much. This podcast has helped me a ton. Yeah. yeah. And you were, I think you were one of the first people that reached out when I was like, I don't know who's listening. Mm-hmm. And then you reached out, you're like, I'm listening and I love this yes. so much. So mm-hmm. huge supporter and always makes me feel so good. And so mm-hmm. now Cassie's helping me grow this community. We're expanding the face of mom in process, because it's not Amy in process, it's moms in process. And so I think it'd be really fun for us to do. We both talked about this being really fun to do like once a month as a Q and a, but just kind of have a conversation too, like yeah. what's going on with me, what's going on with you, what we're working through together. You've also done some of my mentoring. Yes. And mm-hmm. so we've had a lot of conversations around that and things that I've talked about on the podcast and things to kind of help guide you in your journey, um, Mm -hmm. which I think has helped a little. Oh yeah, a lot. It's helped a lot. And I'm excited that the question that we have to ask or to answer today is one that's about that, Mm -hmm. a situation that's helped me um, so much. So I'm excited to ask you a little bit more questions about that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's introduce you a little bit more to how many children do you have? Are you married? What's going on? (laughs) I have two kids. Um, I've been a stay-at-home mom since um, November of 2019. So what year is it now? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a long time. Um, But I just recently started homeschooling thanks to you. So um, I would say that you have been very beneficial in pushing me to the homeschooling thing, which we have loved so much. And also to build any questions that I have about that. But I am married. I grew up in the same town that Amy um, grew up in. So um, yeah, I can't think of what else. Mm-hmm. You guys are um, kind of dabbling in some homesteading too yes. yeah. and in the early stages of that, but with like big long-term goals. Like yeah. every time I talk to Cassie, it's every time I talk to you, it's I like know. big goals. <laughs> and I'm, but I, you know what? I have to say something about that really quick because when I was starting out and I think I've talked to you about this too. And I was like, I want to try this and I want to try that. And I want to experience yeah. this. And, you know, I had so many people that were like, what are you doing? Yeah. That's too much. Slow down, take mm-hmm. a step back. And I wish that I would have just, I, I know that their advice, um, comes from a place of love and concern and all those things. But when you tell me about those things, I'm like, you've got this, yeah. you know, um, I just, I want to make sure that I'm encouraging you and mm-hmm. any of the other moms when they're wanting to try new things. I think that's so brave of you to be wanting to do that because yeah. I think as a society, we, we see moms that are struggling, especially stay at home moms that are struggling and we're like, don't do too much, you know, mm-hmm. slow down, don't overwhelm yourself because there are so many moms that are overwhelmed and you did find yourself in kind of that situation. Yes, and absolutely. we always do. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. when you have that friend who was like, that's awesome, go for it. You know, how can I help that kind of thing? Instead of, oh, that's too much. You know, are you sure you want to do that? And then, and then you decide to do it anyways and you fail then you're much more apt to go to that person that was like, you got this and go, oh my gosh, how, how do I, how do I go forward from here? Instead of I'm embarrassed to tell you that I failed at this. And so mm-hmm. now we can't even have a conversation. It's just, mm-hmm. she told me I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. And now here, you know, yeah. here's where I am instead of like, yeah, like, oh, I put off a lot, but you know, here's what good came out of it instead mm-hmm. of, yeah, just totally embarrassed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and there's, and there's times, I mean, honestly, and I, I think I've even told you this where I'm like in the back of my mind, I'm like, 
you know, I'm cheering you on. I'm saying like, this is great. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be there if something happens, yes, like right. if this doesn't work out, you mm-hmm. know, but it's not like a, oh, Cassie's making a big freaking mistake right, right. here. And she's going to fall flat on her face. Right. I'm like, okay, she's biting off a lot. Do I think that she's totally competent and capable? Absolutely. Do I think motherhood gets the best of all of all of us? Yes. So if something happens, we're going to talk about it and we're going to work through it or whatever, instead right. of being so critical, like yeah. you were saying, like, I told you so, mm-hmm. you know, cause I've been there. I mean, right. I've, yeah. I've Who tried. hasn't been there? You know I what I know. mean? Yeah. 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 So, okay. Well, welcome, Cassie. Thank I'm excited. excited. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're going to dive into one question today because it's a such a big yeah. question. And yeah. this came from my Instagram stories. So I actually, we've dabbled in the conversation. Like, do I post who the questions come from or do I leave it anonymous? And I just think I'm unless somebody says they want to shout out, which I'm happy to do. I think we're just going to leave them anonymous because some of the questions get kind of sensitive. Mm -hmm. Um, But this one did come from Instagram and it's, what does your daily schedule look like for me? And I've been thinking about how to answer this question because we talk about motherhood as being fluid, Mm -hmm. right? All of the ups and downs. And so I'm going to answer this for the audience in the way that I strive for my schedule to be my routine to, to look like, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that is what our routine and our schedule looks like every single day. It can also go really deep. Like what does my schedule look like? What does the children, like, what do my kids' schedule look like? Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to kind of paint a picture of like, what our household routine looks like. You and I have actually had a conversation on the difference between schedules and routines. That was like last summer. I think we chatted about that. So it is, it is tough because there are for me timelines, like there are times in the day that I want to hit certain things at a certain time. So I'll just kind of, I guess, dive in. (laughs) Um, Okay. So my alarm usually goes off about five. I usually roll out of bed about five 30 and that's been working good. Like I've had days where I wake up at six, but we're just going to go with like what I strive for my schedule to be. And it's, um, out of bed, w- woke up by five 30 and then I make the bed first and I head straight upstairs. And sometimes I put my yoga pants on and do all my workout stuff first. Then I go upstairs and I fill up my water and I start on my personal morning routine. <clears throat> and then from there, I'm usually done with that by about 6.45 or so. And then the girls wake up about seven. And for us, this has taken a lot of work to get them. And I know not every, again, this is my routine, my schedule. The girls have okay to wake clocks and their okay to wake clocks go off at seven o'clock. So they're not allowed to come out of their rooms or get up until their green light comes on. And it's not an alarm. It's a light system. And then from there, they know that they can read their stories. They can start on their morning routines of making their beds, getting dressed and getting themselves ready for the day. And then all of my routines are based around our breakfast. It's all based around mealtime. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we usually have breakfast by eight o'clock. And then we're starting in our morning chores for the next hour. And then we have school right about nine. And then I think that's important too, that there's this idea that the kids should have all of this freedom and flexibility, especially as homeschool families. And I don't disagree with that, but I think what I ask of them is for a tiny pocket of time in the morning Mm -hmm. for them to do their routine and their, their morning jobs, I call them their jobs. Yes, right. Um, and then that makes me feel like, okay, they've contributed to the household. We've worked on things together and it gets them outside because part of their outside, part of their morning jobs is getting outside. And then we start on school and we work on school from nine to 11 and then they have free time and I work on whatever it is I need to work on. And then we have lunch by noon. I mean, that's a pretty busy morning already, Mm -hmm. but only an hour really of like a pocket of time for me to get anything done. Right. Yeah. So we have lunchtime, then quiet time about one. And then once they have quiet time or naps are done, 
and Gracie's eight and she still has quiet time. It's still super important to me to have her have her own space in her room. And then from there we have the rest of the afternoon. And I usually start dinner about four 30 quarter to five. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's our day. Yeah. So there's only a few hours in there of open time to like work on podcasting, right. touch base with friends, work on projects around the house. And so bedtime routine looks like a little bit later than it did when we had first started out. Um, when the kids were a little bit younger, it was like a hard seven o'clock, yeah. like seven o'clock in bed mm -hmm. lights out by seven. And now it's closer to about eight with Brad's schedule and how everything works. But I think it's really important for me. A big life lesson was that I tried to I had such high expectations for my day in that I wanted to get this done and this done and this done and this done and all of these things done for myself and for the household and everything. And it just wasn't possible if I was trying to fit a workout in, in the afternoon and, you know, get my reading done in the afternoon or whatever. And that's why I really shifted to that 5. AM. My alarm goes off at five. I was rolling out of bed by five o'clock in the morning. And now it's like, 5 30 right now that the kids sleep in a little bit, but the rest of the day, we have to lower our expectations mm -hmm. for what we can get accomplished. Because when you really like, when you really lay out all of those things for how the days look, you're left with like, what, <laughs> two hours, right? Yeah. three hours, maybe you know, like, it'd be really great to sit at some point today. You know uh, yeah, I mean? like, you exactly. This to-do list of things. And, and that's, I am stuck in that. Like I, I find myself keep getting stuck in that. Like I've got so many expectations to what my whole week looks like, that, mm -hmm. but I did finally, I got like a, you know, an hour by hour planner and I mm -hmm. wrote it all out and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't actually have a lot, you know, I've got all mm -hmm. these, I, my list probably has 20 things on it and, and I expect to get it done in half an hour a day. Like mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. While meeting the needs and mm -hmm. of your kid, of your children, homeschooling, potty training, right, totally. you know, all of those, all of those other obligations that kind of go into this role. Um, you know, we, we have this vision, I think for all of the things that we want to do, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think we have these expectations for, yeah, what we can get done in a day. And, and when you write it out like that, yeah. it's like this whole, oh shit moment. Right. Of, why would I think that I could get all of it done in essentially like two or three hours? Right. And so, and, and both of our girls are in this life stage right now where they just want to be held all the time. So that yes. really, I mean, you know, all the, the daily jobs and the schoolwork and, you know, lunch and dinner, like you said, those, those meals that happen during the day, all that aside, it's just like, but that's why I'm here. That's why mm -hmm. I'm here is to be able to hold my child when they really need me and really need to be held, mm -hmm. you know? So then you're like, okay, right. Other things can wait. I can do this right now. Or, mm -hmm. or sometimes you fall into, no, not right now. I got to do this, you know? So yeah. it's like, it kind of varies for me day by day, which, which side of that I fall on. You know? Yeah. I think that's okay too, because mm -hmm. we, we get the opportunity to look at like, it, it is in a, it's not even like seven days. It's like all of the years, right. you know, it's not even like, oh, I only have five days to do this. And then we have two days on the weekend. Like every mm -hmm. single day is a weekend. Yes. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. I didn't really explain that very well, but like, you're not just looking at the pockets of time that you have when you're not working because mm -hmm. you're with them all the time. So you can say, okay, I'm going to take Monday and I'm going to really buckle down and focus on these tasks. And if it doesn't happen, then you're like, okay, fine. I'll just do it on Tuesday, right. you know, <laughs> yeah. because you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then it starts all over again. Yeah. You have all of those days to shift and pivot and meet the needs of yourself, but also your family. As Mother's Day approaches, I wanted to be sure to take a minute and let you know that I've put together a couple of very beautiful, very empowering products specifically for my stay at home mom listeners, because I have tried to find specifically labeled stay at home mom merchandise because I want to feel empowered. I want to feel excited about my role as a mom. Everything else that I've seen out there, which is also beautiful products, but it's catered towards moms in general. And I wanted something specific for my role for my full-time mom role. So I put together a couple of 
beautiful products that I'm so excited to share with you. There is a link in the show notes below. You can also head on over to my website or the Instagram page for links to those products as well. Don't be shy. Send this to your spouse. Send this to the people that you love and say, this is what I really want for Mother's Day. These are the things that really mean a lot to me, that empower me, inspire me, and make me feel good about the role that I'm in. Not just as a mom, but also as a stay-at-home mom, as a full-time mother. So head on over to Instagram or my website. Check the link in the show notes below. And with that being said, let's get back to this conversation. Yeah. But it's not always that easy. No, you know? because you, it's so you, hard in that moment. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you you almost start to take that for granted that you do have. Um, or what am I trying to say? Like you, you forget that you are. That's what you're there for, or that mm-hmm. you you have these pockets of time to make a difference in your child's life. When you're like, oh well, I'm going to be here tomorrow too. Well, I'm going to be here tomorrow too. I'll just do it another day. I'll do it another day. Mm-hmm. And so you have to go. But wait a second, this is going to fly by too fast if I just keep pushing it, you know, yeah. not the, not the jobs that need done around the house, but the, the holding and the cuddling yeah. and the, yeah. the intentional time. Yes, with the your intentional child. Time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those are the times that really, if we allowed ourselves to slow down, those are really like when I do, at least I, I feel like, oh yeah, this is actually what I needed today. Like yeah. I needed story time. I needed to read and I needed to like snuggle and take a nap, yeah. you know, or whatever. Like I needed that time instead mm-hmm. of I need to make dinner or I need to do all these things. Like, I I mean, it's okay if I made peanut butter and jelly tonight because I shifted and spent time with Lily during Mm -hmm. the day. So, um, so what does your daily schedule or routine look Mm -hmm. like? Yeah, I would say that it's very similar to yours, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the ideal schedule is that I, my schedule looks very similar to yours. And maybe that's because you and I have had those conversations where, you know, you do lay out what yours looks like. And so I mirror mine to look that way. But, um, but right now I will admit that I've fallen a bit behind on, you know, when I wake up and we're, you know, moving my own body, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that, especially with the weather, it's been snowing at our house. And so yeah. it gives me an excuse to, I just stay inside today or whatever. Um, but, but yeah, most of the time my, my schedule looks very similar to yours and yeah. we, and I thrive on that. The kids and I thrive, you know, my, our whole mm-hmm. family does, um, yeah. And so when it, when it's a bit off and I was going to ask you, um, that kind of leads me into a question for you about like, how do you, you know, when, when our schedule, when that schedule is off, it really affects our, so how did you, like, how do you troubleshoot that? Like when you mm-hmm. find yourself starting to get into kind of like a rut where you're like, oh, yeah, I've been waking up at six 30 or, mm-hmm. you know, if that ever happens or yeah, I haven't worked out in a couple of days, you know, you can feel yourself getting on that train of everything starting to fall apart. Yeah. How do you like, check in with yourself and go, whoa, we've got to stop this before it goes south Mm -hmm. or, or does it go south? And then you're like, Oh, let's get this back. You know, where I think, I think, I honestly think for me, it will, I I laid the foundation. Mm -hmm. So I know what I need to do. Do we always listen to what we need to do? No, (laughs) no. No. And I, I talk about that openly. Like I am, I am also imperfect. I have issues, you know, I have my own struggles. And so when we talk about our ideal routine, I know, like you said, that that is a routine that I thrive on and Mm -hmm. that my children thrive on and that my husband thrives on. And that's where the majority of my boxes get checked. Yeah. So the, the majority of like the expectations that I have for the day get checked. So like, for example, some of my, one of my daily expectations is like, we don't go to bed with dishes in the sink. Um, it's very important for me to move my body. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I spent a little bit of quality time with the girls, like all of those boxes um, need checked in some kind of a way. So for me, I'm like, didn't get that done. Didn't get that done. Didn't get that done. Okay. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, right. I didn't wake up until seven o'clock this morning. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get anything done in my morning routine. Even if it's like five minutes of getting a load of laundry started first mm-hmm. thing in the morning, that just won't get done if I don't do it in my normal, regular routine, totally. which is first thing in the morning. So I start looking at like, I haven't accomplished this. I haven't accomplished this. I feel like shit. I'm grumpy. The kids are unhappy and it all starts to build up. And it usually starts with like not meeting my personal expectations for the day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there, the next step is I feel like crap because I haven't met those expectations for the day. And then from there, the kids start getting really, really grumpy because I'm treating everybody like crap because I feel like crap. And then things are off with Brad and I, and then it just, yeah, it just, 
freaking explodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, right. That's yeah. right. Um, so I think naturally we, we get sucked into this um, self-sabotaging mentality yeah. where like, I didn't do it this morning. So I'm not going to do it the rest of the day. Well, I didn't do it yesterday. So I'm not going to do it today. And pretty soon a week's gone by. Yeah. And then that's when it really like truly falls apart. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is so common for people. It's not very often that we say, okay, I made a mistake yesterday and I'm going to shift and I'm going to pivot and 24 hours later, just become this like incredible person all over again. Mm-hmm, yeah, right? You know, yeah. like that's very exaggerated. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for me, a lot of the times it is like physically, I feel like crap and yeah. emotionally I'm not feeling well. And then I realize, okay, what does my foundation look like? Totally. Am I doing these things? Nope. I'm definitely not doing these things. A lot of the times it's caused because of stress, things that are happening in our family life or expectations too high of expectations that I put on myself, where then I back off and I'm like, I'm not doing any of it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> those t- types of things start to really build and then, yeah, just really fall out of control. I think it's very, very rare, um, but it is doable to like, okay, I made this mistake yesterday and I slept in, but I'm going to pivot and just, I'm going to make up for it. And I'm, I'm not going to do that tomorrow. I mean, that I have definitely a hundred percent done that. Like, especially if the kids have had a, like a late night or they're sick or whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm going to sleep in today mm-hmm. knowing that I'm going to get up the next day. But the difference is when it's, co- it's sort of a self self self-sabotaging act mm-hmm. where you're like, things are happening. I don't feel good or I sure. don't do these things. And then it kind of compounds on each other. Yeah. So yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What what is your like what is your prompt when that happens? Like yeah. what what do you, you know, could it be a couple of days go by and you're like, oh yeah. Cause mm-hmm. it can't be as easy as well I didn't wake up at five. You know, maybe it is yeah. for you. I don't know because yeah. you have you do have such a strong foundation in your in your mm-hmm. routines and stuff like that. But maybe it is like, oh I can tell that this you know, the morning that you wake mm-hmm. up late, this is you know why I'm feeling this mm-hmm. way. But for me it's usually like a couple of days later where I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's why it all, you know, no, no, no. absolutely. No, Mm -hmm. I totally have those moments even now. Like, well, like we're talking about, I, my face is breaking out right now. And I'm like, that is so weird. Like what is going on? Oh, right. Because I've been eating chocolate and Mm. I've been eating, I had candy at Easter and Gracie made cookies. And so like, I know that that's been happening, not just like in a 24 hour period, like that's something that's been happening. Those are choices that I've been making Mm -hmm. for two weeks, three weeks, you know? So now I'm like, okay, I need to go back to the foundation that I've set for what nutrition works for my body, but like getting up in the mornings, it absolutely. So what triggers it again is just that I haven't checked any of the boxes for the day. And then the things that I have, like that expectation that I have for myself and for our household is not hitting its mark yeah. at all consistently every yeah. single day. So like my vision for what I want for us as a family, as a stay at home mom and for my household, isn't meeting that expectation, not one day, not two days, but like, okay, this is two weeks going in. What is going on? Oh, okay. And then I think honestly, it's like, it's like almost a full you, for me, I, I know it when I'm in that moment, Yeah, I know what I should be doing Mm -hmm. and I'm choosing to not listen to that and come up with like mental excuses of why I'm not making that choice, why I'm not getting up early or like, I deserve this Mm -hmm. or I've earned this, or I need me time at night. So I'm going to stay up till 11 or 12, which means I'm you know, needing to sleep in a little bit later and it's okay. I'll get it done in the afternoon. And then the afternoon rolls around and I'm not getting it done. So for me, I know what my, what I need to be doing when I'm in that moment, but that doesn't mean that I'm always a strong enough person to say, Amy, you need to make a change. Mm -hmm. Usually it's some kind of an event or some kind of like a, like a, thing like your my face is breaking out like oh my gosh I have to really cut out sugar yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is really happening for me yeah like, yeah, yeah what what totally. about you yeah I I can just you know just feel that I don't 
I don't know, just like my body will start hurting. And yeah, mm-hmm. like I, I have been, and I, I'm not usually one to stay up very late, but I have been staying up till 11, just like, well, I don't have any me time, but I'm also not waking up at five. You know what I mean? I could, I could get my me time in at five o'clock or mm-hmm. I could get my me time in at 11, which serves me the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I, everything that you're saying, like, yep, I'm, yep. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of the times people are looking for, and this is just, this is not me saying anything oh, critical yeah. about right. you, but I think a lot of the times we're seeking like this answer, like, well, how do we know mm-hmm. when to make that shift? And I really feel like this is that tough love. Like you already know, oh, 100%. like you already know. And you, there is a voice in the back of your head when you're pouring that extra glass of wine, opening another bottle of wine, eating the fourth cookie that day. That's like, I shouldn't be fucking doing this. Yeah. And I'm still going to be doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, because then the validation comes in and the excuses come in or you pick up the phone and call a friend or you text a friend and they validate you like, no, you deserve it. You work so hard as a mom and a wife. And, you know, it's okay if you're still up late, but, and that's, I want to just really say too, like if you're a night owl and that serves you and not getting up early is fine for you, then, then don't listen to, you know, my routine and my schedule, but like nine times out of 10, the women that I talk to and the, the people I have these conversations with, um, it's not, it's not serving them. Yeah. Like staying up later leads to snacking on foods. Um, and then it leads to sleeping in and then waking up when the kids wake up. And then it leads to everybody being grumpy because you're not prepared for those tiny humans to come at you mm-hmm. and demanding, I want breakfast. I want this. And you're like, I need a hot freaking second, yeah. you know, but I mean, I've been there and it still comes in ebbs and flows. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say, I wake up every single day by 5 a.m. Because that would be a lie. And that wouldn't be the realities of motherhood, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think, I do think that the trigger is already in your mind Mm -hmm. and you already know I should be doing something different. I should be getting back to like those foundational aspects that create a better environment for myself and my family. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have been having those like that. It's almost like a sinking feeling, right? You're like, yeah, oh, here's what I'm doing. I can feel myself mm-hmm. knowing right and choosing differently. So yeah, I, I've been sitting with that for about a week. Those, those feelings, of, mm-hmm. you're not really, you're not really doing what serves your family or you or, you know, anything. So like yesterday I, I put in probably 10 alarms, you know, this is, this is when I'm waking up workout, fill your water, you know, just mm-hmm. to, if you, even if I, because the, okay. I would have to push stop on those alarms Mm -hmm. and then actively not do those things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Fill your water. No, like instead of it's not an internal dialogue at that point. Oh yeah. I'll do it later. It's no, I'm not going to do it. Yes. No, I'm not going to take my vitamins. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to do like work out or no, I'm not going to wake up right now. It's like a Mm -hmm. a choice in that moment that I have to press a button Mm -hmm. instead of just, yeah, that internal dialogue. Yeah. I love that idea actually of just putting it in your phone and Mm -hmm. having that alarm instead of writing it down on a piece of paper yeah. that you have to, you know, put on the fridge, because this is actually an act of, like you said, saying no to something mm-hmm. versus looking at the fridge and saying, eh, I'm not going to do that I'll right now. Kind of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what are your thoughts on, on schedules versus routines? Because this is, it's kind of hard to explain to Absolutely. people. Um, you and I had that conversation last summer where, and I, I kind of encouraged you to like focus on like, just like three hours in the day. Like you're well, really like your those meal times. Like, when do you want to have breakfast? When do you want to have lunch? And when do you want to have dinner? And then, you know, kind of allowing the routine in between to go that way. Does that work better for you? Or does like a set schedule work better for you? Yeah. So when we had first talked about like, for example, homeschooling, mm-hmm. I went right home and I was like eight o'clock reading. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, 10 o'clock language arts. <laughs> yeah. O'clock then we're going to take a lunch and then a recess. <laughs> and we're going to do art and science and all that. Yeah. And so that I could go from eight to three. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you were mm-hmm. like, Oh, that's so good. Like, you know, the encouraging uh-huh. supportive. I did the same thing, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. go for it. Cause I know in the back now hindsight, I know you're going, you're not going eight to three. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bravo, Cassie. <laughs> we'll be here when it fails. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so those kind of schedules where you, well, I guess I have two different, when you, when you limit yourself to at this time, I'm going to do this at this time, I'm going to do this. 
I, I, as a schedule, I don't think that that works for us. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have to say that writing in, you know, that calendar that I was talking about that has the, the hourly, you know, hourly schedule that, that does work for us. And I, and right now I don't know how to pinpoint why that works and why that, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But like, I know that morning job, you know, kids are going to wake up at seven and we do breakfast then eight o'clock. We're doing morning jobs, nine o'clock. We do school to 11 Mm o'clock or 10, you know, 10, cause we're just doing kindergarten. But, um, but I can't put a finger on why that works and why like, you know, a set schedule where it's exactly the activities that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's just morning jobs. So it could be anything it's school. It could be anything, you know, but it just keeps us going on those Mm -hmm. those times, I guess. Yeah. It keeps the, for me, it keeps the, the momentum of the day going Mm because we know what to expect next. And the thing that I thought about this morning is that it helps the kids know what to expect, which keeps the fluidity of the day going, Mm -hmm. or I guess maybe the the forward momentum would be a better way to describe it of the day. Um, And that really came from me because Gracie was such a routine baby that she needed to know, okay, I'm going to brush my teeth. And then I walk into my bedroom and I open the bottom drawer and I pick out my pants. Do you know what I mean? Like very granular Mm -hmm. for her, it needed to be the same. And she is still that way today. So like she really kind of runs our routine. She's our, you know, our oldest. And then we all kind of, I don't want to say like we fall in line with her. Um, but it helps the other two to know, okay, this is kind of what Gracie's moving on to, or this is what we're all going to move on to as a family. And then we move, move forward from there. So there, everybody knows what the expectations of those transitions in our day are. Mm-hmm. For me, that's what really helps with the transitions is like, you know, everybody struggles they, or they talk about like the struggling and transitioning from like nap time to play time or mm-hmm. like play time to dinner time, dinner time to bedtime, like those yeah. big transitions during the day. But if you have a routine that is exactly the same, but without having it in a set schedule and having it be like by five o'clock, we're putting a fork on the table, mm-hmm. you know, and, yeah. and five ten, we're pulling condiments out of the fridge. I don't know. That's not a very good example, (laughs) but like you're super granular with that. Then it doesn't allow for like, okay, between five and five 30, we're going to be working towards dinner Mm -hmm. and like the kids can kind of clean up, but what does cleanup look like? Is that outside cleanup? Is that inside cleanup? Or is that maybe today, like they're going to, they're really in engulfed in a play time and you're going to continue with dinner. Mm -hmm. So for me, it helps with those transition times, the kids knowing what to expect and it's bigger chunks of time versus by 8 a.m. we're doing this and 8.15 we're doing that. And don't get me wrong, like I totally did that. (laughs) And I think one of the most common things that I was Googling when I first started out as a stay-at-home mom was stay-at-home mom schedule. Schedule, Like I wanted a schedule and it cracks me up a little bit about your, the homeschooling schedule. Cause I also did that, but it's funny because your mom's a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, that's like so ingrained in us, yeah, you know, right. to have sort of this lesson plan mm-hmm. already out, but then we take that into our days too. So yeah, I don't absolutely. know. It's really tough. Yeah. The difference between schedules and routines is yeah, it's mm-hmm. really tough, but yeah. anyways okay this was such a fun conversation yeah. cassie thanks for coming on yeah. um ladies we will continue to have these open conversations and uh q a's so if you have any q a's it's really fun for cassie to just shoot them off for me not to expect them um so send them to cassie it's cassie c-a-s-s-i-e at mom and and then we'll also probably put some up on instagram too you can always send me a dm And then we have our Facebook community that you, it's a private Facebook community also that you can pose questions in there. If you're struggling with something in your routine or in motherhood or whatever, we, we love to have those open conversations in there too. So Cassie, thank you. Thank you for having me on. And we're uh, cheetah girls today. Yes, I know. Totally (laughs) unprompted. Totally (laughs) unprompted. Maybe we'll try and do like a theme every time. If I was a better singer, I'm singing the cheetah girls. (laughs) next time (laughs) to be continued (laughs) all right thank you so much for listening sweet mamas i look forward to talking to you all again very soon 